All right, well, <clears throat> I'll say this uh, just real quick. I'm not huge on the opening statement thing and all that, but a few things. Number one, good to be here. Uh, this is my 15th year in the National Football League, 25th in coaching. And I would say every day that I've been able to step into one of these buildings truly been a pleasure. Uh, working for this organization has been incredible. And to have the opportunity to be around these players is a humbling experience, especially during training camp where these guys are fighting for roster spots. It's really hard. And uh, the reality of it is that 90-man roster is going to cut down. <clears throat> but uh, I have a lot of respect for these guys playing. Um, I will also say that a uh, big day in the FIP household, our oldest daughter is going off to college. She's headed to the University of Alabama. So I had to say goodbye to her this morning. Uh, that's never easy, but uh, it was good. And I really appreciate my wife for driving her down there and uh, doing that. I don't know where this country would be without mothers. Um, they're incredible and do a great job. So uh, a lot of respect for them. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, I love being here. I love football. And uh, I'm blessed. And uh, I'm ready for any questions. Special team stuff. Do you, because of the job and everything, do you get to take college visits with your daughter? Do you like how, how does some of that work? Uh, yeah, uh, I I did in the off season. Yeah, white Bama, <laughs> Bama, big football, big parties, uh, <laughs> lower academic standards, and I got no idea where she got it from. <laughs> <laughs> Golly, what did she take after my wife? <laughs> uh, um, no, yeah, I did. I actually, I actually got to take her down to Alabama last year. We went to Alabama, Auburn, and uh, and that was great. My wife took her to Tennessee. She was all SEC, um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, we're excited for her. What's that? that? Football swear to the SEC? Yeah, yeah, all football. I mean, she wanted the biggest football. I said, yeah, University of Arizona. She's like, not big enough. I'm like, oh yeah. Uh, but uh, it was all football for sure. And uh, the biggest question, I, I went home last night and I got a chance to see her also. And she, the only question she had is how she's going to get the remaining season tickets for the home games. I guess they get like two packages. She gets one and there's like three games. And she's like, well, I want, how do I get to the other ones? So she's trying to figure that out right now. Um, now I'm sure on to the linebackers and the kickers. <laughs> and that, that is your, your most visible competition, obviously, is, is the place kicker, um, just, just because of the island nature of that role. Uh, we only see, you know, just a handful of kicks, maybe every other practice, four or five kicks. So w what's going into that evaluation behind the scenes that, that we're not seeing? Yeah, no, uh, great question, Jeff. I, obviously, uh, I, like I tell those players, everything goes into it. So I'm watching everything, how they warm up, how they kick in practice warming up, how they kick in the live periods, how they kick when we go into the stadium, how they kick on game days, what they've done in the past um, also counts. So I, I would say everything. I mean, they're, I hate to use the line, the total body of work, but I mean, it really is true. And I think... You know, kickers are going to have good days and not as good days. You guys are going to miss. It's ultimately not going to come down to the numbers of makes and misses in any one training camp or anything like that. But for me, it would be, you know, I, I think there's some, you know, level of talent. Do they have enough talent? Can they do the things that we need them to do effectively from a kickoff standpoint and a field goal standpoint? Um, are they going to be consistent enough and, um, you know, maybe upside factors into it too at some point. Um, but I, I would say a lot. Uh, the one thing I would say is I do feel really fortunate because, I mean, a year ago we were in a totally different spot looking for guys. I feel like we have two guys who could definitely play in the National Football League right now um, here in this building. I, I think they had a great offseason. They're really committed players. Um, football is really important to both of them. They have great work ethic. They're great people, and uh, the teammates really like them, both of them. So I feel really good with where we're at. And ultimately now, it really kind of makes our job easy. We can just sit back and watch and kind of see where they go from here. You're talking about the linebacker position a lot with Dan. He was up here. Um, it seems like you have maybe even, I um, know that's a problem, but maybe even more like sort of top-notch special teams players in that, that group than, than the roster can handle. I don't know if that's accurate, but, but you know, it seems like you have a good mix of guys there that, that can really be big time contributors for the special teams. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. 
I feel like when I look at that group, I'm like, yeah, I'm not worried. With I mean, sometimes you look at a position group from my shoes and you're like, oh, if we keep this guy over that guy, it could be hard uh, on special teams, maybe good for defense, but hard for us. And and sometimes it's vice versa. It's like, hey, it's going to be great for special teams. And I, I feel really good about this group overall, um, certainly from my standpoint on special teams. I mean, with all these guys, you know, we have – a bunch of guys competing for the job. I feel like all of them can do it. They all have different pluses and minuses, strengths and weaknesses, um, which will factor into kind of like once we cut down the roster and how we're going to play a game and, you know, positions we'll put guys in and scheme and all that kind of stuff. But but uh, at the end of the day, we'll be in a good position uh, with the linebacker group for sure on special teams. Yeah. Try to formulate, you know, opinions based on film of, of your new incoming players. I'm, I'm sure uh, between the college guys and maybe some of the, the veteran free agents you've added, has, has anybody surprised you or impressed you more with uh, a role you had envisioned for them now that you've seen them on the field and in pads? Yeah, I would say at this point it's probably still hard to tell if, if you're being fair to the players because I think ultimately – there's a handful of things going on. Number one is we really haven't played the game yet. We put pads on, but we really haven't played. Uh, we do try to make some drills competitive, um, and I think some of the drills that we do show a lot, um, at least historically they have, and I feel like that will continue. But um, I also feel like, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to keep these guys safe and keep them in a safe environment, and you really want to see what they do when these preseason games start. and. From my position, I try not to have too much of an opinion right now um, because history tells me that in a couple of weeks our opinion is going to change. And so just be patient. Uh, watch these guys. Put them in a situation where they can compete and they can show their skill set and then believe what the tape says and what the film says. On top of the uh, preseason games, how valuable for special teams are the joint practices yeah. that you guys are going to have with Indy? Yeah, great question, Tim. Uh, the, the joint practices are huge um, in, from my perspective because, like, one thing for us on special teams, I know every special teams coach would say the same thing. When we practice punt, like against the Colts this year, uh, we'll, we'll get a real live rush in a safe environment where the punter's protected, but the rush is going to be full speed. And in the preseason games, we might see one rush the whole preseason. Um, people are working on return game, hold up. They want to see guys match up one-on-one -on -one in the return phase. Um, and so they're trying to get an evaluation on a lot of players from a return perspective, not so much a rush perspective. But when you go into that first regular season game of the year, um, for us against Philly, you know, these guys are going to rush us. And uh, so I would say from a pump protection standpoint, that's the biggest thing. But it's also a great opportunity because you see some different players who have different strengths and weaknesses. You don't necessarily know those guys as well. And uh, so it, it really helps. With, uh, with, Godwin, with Godwin last year, um, relatively new return role for him, uh, ends up finishing, I think, fourth in the NFL in, in yards per attempt on returns without, I think he's the only guy without a touchdown too in that, that top four group. So um, what, what did you think of the performance last year and where do you see areas of, of growth for him in that role? Yeah, you know, I mean, I know you guys remember it didn't start out great. That's a, we had a lot of questions after the opener there. Um, he let the one go between his legs and all that. But I mean, um, you know, Godwin's incredible because it wasn't really what he was doing when he got here a year ago. He changed positions. We asked him to be a returner. He went back there and did it. And by the end of the year, he was pretty good at it. Uh, I feel really good about Godwin. I mean, he's just an impressive person. He's got an incredible work ethic. He loves the game. He's overcome a million obstacles. And he's really a great example for all of us. I mean, the guy just doesn't take no for an answer. Uh, you give him a job, he finds a way to get better and better at it. And before it's all said and done, you're like, golly, this guy's a really good football player. Um, so he's done great for us. Um, I think just like anybody, I think we're always trying to improve on a daily basis. And there's always room for improvement. Um, I think he feels that way. Um, but I feel really good with where he's at and super fortunate to have him here. One of the running backs 
Dan mentioned how, how, what strides as a special teams player we've seen from Jamar. You know, something he never really did before he got here. So where's he at? Yeah, I would say, you know what, Jamar's taken a, a nice jump from year one to year two, which he really needed to make because obviously last year wasn't really good enough. Um, but uh, he's taken a, a really sizable jump. I've told him that. I know he knows that. He's done a great job. Now it's just going to come down to how he plays in those preseason games and these things. But I would say, based off how he's practicing, I feel real good about it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. See you guys.